Hello YouTubers, this is a quick session where we get to talk a little bit about, you know, data retentions and, you know, some features and capabilities that can make your life so much easier when it comes to, you know, keeping track of the changes in your data, especially if you're building an enterprise level system. If you're building an enterprise level system, it's very likely that you're going to run into a situation where you need to somehow find a way to retain historical changes in your data. So, you know, the, you know whether you're saving invoices, you know, registrations and some schooling systems, whatever the case may be, you want to know exactly what changed and how long that change, you know, uh, remained between one period of time to the next okay now uh, you know a lot of you know that I use I like to use an, an OEM you know kind of framework the entity framework that allows you to kind of turn your C sharp code into SQL and then just applies that and onto your database it makes things simpler you know it's very common across multiple platforms and multiple programming languages you know there's always an alternative out there whatever programming language you're using um, I'm going to today, today use the entity framework to show you a very simple example that can allow you to kind of grasp the idea of maintaining, you know, uh, uh, historical data of your changes. And hopefully you'll find this, uh, you know, video interesting. So let's just get started here. Um, you know, usually I'm just going to go back to the to the board here. So assume that you have a database in here. And let's say this is your, you know, students students table right and you have some client some system sitting in here right and this system is basically its only responsibility is to basically go and you know interact with your data you know it's manipulating your data it's adding data removing data whatever the case may be right so this is your client and the system you know eventually the data that is being added is going to need to be modified removed you know something is going to happen to it right Tempor temporal tables, you know, in the entity framework, and that's basically what, what the technology that we're going to do is, it creates an alternative table that's associated with this one. So this would be students history table. And every time you do a change on one record, it'll basically take a copy of the previous record before you modified it, and then puts it in that table. In addition to that, it'll kind of give you you know, a period of time, how long that record have stayed in your database, right? Period start, period end, it'll tell you exactly the period of time that record was in this particular shape and form with that particular data uh, in the database table. Let's jump into code, you know, talk is cheap. Let's create a quick a console application in here. Let's do this together. Here we go, create a new project and console app next let's call it fight fight parkinson's you know app okay i'm going to use some um certain naming conventions that kind of remind people who are uh you know kind of watching these videos of certain charities and things that we care about you know that you know i'm trying to bring awareness to these things as we as we go okay so let's just fix our program real quick so in here you know I don't don't really like this disable that and disable this the reason why you know I disable all these things is because I want to minimize the noise but I also want you that when you're looking at your code you're seeing the whole story you're seeing exactly what's happening you know in front of you okay so let's just first install a bunch of libraries right let's go ahead in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and go into the Manage NuGet packages. I'm gonna look for uh, Entity Framework SQL. Here's the SQL Server, like this. And then let's also pick up. Uh, I want the tools. I don't know if Tools brings in Design with it or not. It would be nice if we could select a bunch of libraries at once. That would be pretty cool. There might be a way to do it. Uh, you can always also just kind of modify your CS proj, but I guess it's a lot less convenient than just using the UI. Anyway, so I installed a bunch of libraries, you know, to be able to connect to a database. And then I'm going to go ahead in here and kind of create a storage broker kind of class, just as as I've shown you before in, in different places. And here's my constructor. 
I want when I run the app this will run the database migration for me that's great and then we want to basically connect this little uh, broker to a uh, to a database right so let's override this let's go ahead and say on configuring and then I'm gonna take this and minimize here so this is your options builder dot use SQL like this and I need to pass in my connection string in here right your connection string <clears throat> if you're building an ASP.NET ASP.NET Core application you know if you create a new app settings project it's just gonna give you that right but if you don't have it you can always steal it from another project so I'm gonna steal it from here I'm gonna slap that in here there you go instead of demo DB I say fight Parkinson's DB okay so that's a little database connection string that I have in here we won't need the solution here anymore so I'm gonna keep it really close so you can just see what's going on <clears throat> okay so I need a model so let's just go ahead and create a model so public class student and that student has an ID if you do the ID like this as an integer like this the entity framework just a, a really nice hint on the side usually we use GUID because you don't want to allow people to kind of guess what the data is just in case you have access to your API and it's not managed per row or per column in terms of visibility it, the the best practice that I recommend is use GUID in here right you know even if the database is generating stuff for you you know it doesn't matter because you're allowing it it's a potential attack right in some fancy places people do it as a string like this but they have a particular format you probably have seen this in some places where it's like SD and then some number like that right that's also okay because it's not that easy to kind of guess how these numbers are generated you know unless you have something obvious like a date you know or or something like that you open yourself up for it becomes an attack vector right so okay so a string just just something super simple string name there you go so now I have my student and I want to create a DB set right so I'm just gonna go down here and say prop DB set student this in here what it's gonna do it's basically just gonna go ahead and you know tell the entity framework created a, a, a table called students right that's really all that it's going to do okay let's go ahead and create a migration file so I'm just gonna go ahead and say add migration uh, add student Here we go it's gonna build the system connect to the database and just create a bunch of fun stuff for me or it's gonna error out where is this uh, label oh yeah because I, I did something weird with with the name add students it took a new line and then just there yeah there you go okay you, you want to see how how I really think on the fly that's pretty much it you know you, you're gonna run into problems that you haven't had when you were preparing for this and then you have to think on the fly to make it happen okay so it generated this for me I'm just gonna go ahead and update the database right so I'm just gonna go and say update database ideally if you're running your program since we have the database migration already in place it takes care of that for you but if you go and look into your SQL server in here watch this yes your Visual Studio has a SQL server um, uh, management you know capability yeah, there you go fight Parkinson's DB do you see that and inside that you're gonna see a table and that table will have the exact same properties that you want to have in you know in your model so far so good right let's test this guy let's just go ahead and add a record in there just for all intents and purposes let's go ahead and say var student new student like that and then you don't need an ID you don't need to pass an ID here because the database will generate it for you like OJ Fox like this and then here's your broker new storage broker like this and then broker dot add and here's my student and then broker dot save changes you can also do save changes async you can make your main method you know a asynchronous method if you want to let's do this let's save this guy first and let's go here and say dot net run project and then let's go to fight Parkinson's app and then here you go let's do this so it's gonna try to add a new student record in here 
<laughs> I forgot to remove the hello world, that's okay. If I go back here and just view the data, you can see ID1 Michael J. Fox. So far, so good, right? So just like that, you know, you basically created a database connection, a model, and you're adding the data in the database, right? So far, so good. Now here comes the fun part, right? Now we want to basically say, hey, retain copies of the data that's in that system. So I want to go here and say override and then on model creating. And then I'm going to take this model builder dot entity. I'm going to pass the student to it like this. So far, so good. And then I'm going to go and say uh, uh, the uh, to table. And the table name is students. Right. And then I'm going to go and say this students table like this is temporal. Here comes the magic. Just like that. That's all you have to do, right? You're basically just going and saying, this is my table. Uh, 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 let's let's do this name like this. Yeah, I am that kind of stickler that will just kind of <laughs> try to at least make the code a little bit readable because I'm going to have to share it with you. So I'm going to make it pretty, right? Um, what, what you're doing here is that you're basically saying, this is temporal is going to create another table for you. And this table is going to maintain, you know, all the changes that are happening in your data, right? This will also require a migration. So I'm going to go back to my migration here and then say add students temporal like that. You can see here it's going to generate a bunch of files. You can see there will be, you know, the history, you know, there is, you know, period end, period start. Go through this, play around. It's all yours. You know, have fun with that code. Um, but now you know, things have changed, right? Because now if I go and modify this record, this Michael J. Fox record, things are going to be a little bit different. So I know that the ID is one. I'm going to go here and say update. And I'm passing in the student. And now I'm going to run my code again. Let's see what happens now. Now watch this. Even though it, it, it you know, it, it basically persisted the record. But if I refresh my database, watch this, do you see this? This student table here now has a little time, a little timer next to it. And if you open it up, you have this new table in here. So there's students history, right? With very particular columns. The columns in there are the exact same columns in your model, plus period start, period end. So now what? Now if you open up this new historical data, it'll tell you, hey, this record used to be Michael J. Fox, and then you just updated it. You didn't really do much, you know, but you just updated it. So even if you're passing in the exact same values, it'll just keep, you know, saying, hey, this is a new record, even though you're updating it. Let's just actually update it, right? Let's say the, let's re remove the J part, right? And let's just run this. There you go. So now if I go and refresh this historical data, now it says you used to have MJ Fox. And now if you look at the original table, you have Michael Fox. See, let's put it back to where it was just so I can show you the continuity of this. If I go and say Michael J. Fox like this again, right? I'm going to even say new. So you know that this is the, the record that stays. Here you go. And then go back to student history and refresh. You can see the last record. When did it start? When did it end? Right? When did you change it? All the time, by the way, is UTC time. You know, all the time that you have here is UTC. So it's not really 8.14 a.m. here in Seattle, Washington. It's more like 12.14 a.m. But um, you can see here it's saying this is your record, and here's the changes that happened to that record. Now, the next thing to this is that, how do you consume that data, right? So let's take away all of this, and let's go here and say brokers, students, watch this, temporal, all. So now you have an iQueryable of students like this, right? So that's your iQueryable, just like when you're pulling all the students, pretty much the same thing. And this iQueryable, you know, allows you to do whatever you want, right? So in here you have temporal all, but you can also go and say temporal as of, 
and you pass in a particular date and time. So in here you can say I want this particular date of time. You can also say temporal in between and you pass in from to. You know between and from you get certain records. So let me just show you here temporal all real quick. Just gonna put a console in here, right line, and then here's students, and then we're gonna put a breakpoint in there just so you can see what's happening. There you go. And this guy will break in here, which is perfect. And then if you open up this guy and you look at the students, you can see here, <laughs> let me, uh, you can see here all the changes and that includes the current one, right? Now someone might say, well, I don't see the dates on this, right? Well, the dates is what you're supposed to pass in as a query and then you're going to honor the order from there. And I think there, there should be a way to do this. I don't know what the way is to do something like that. You know, maybe a little bit of digging and a little bit of research will help you. The point of this video is just to kind of open up your eyes to the, to the possibilities that you have out there. So the order here is super important though. Like you can see here that at first it will tell you that it will give you the most recent kind of record. And then from there onwards, it's going to start giving you all the different, you know, possibilities, all the changes that actually happened since that last record uh, has occurred. Um, super important for you to understand that you have the option also, like when you go up in here and you say is temporal like this, let's bring these guys down like that. If you say that, you can also start modifying on that guy particularly. And you can go and say, well, use history table and you can name the particular table. Like it doesn't have to be like in here, it's kind of making things easier for you and saying, oh, I'm going to just call it student's history. But it's up to you. You want to call it whatever you want to call it. That's up to you. You can also do uh, uh, use has, has period and, you know, what do you want to call the property name for it? Like you can call it start and you know, you have all of these options in there, right? Why is it important for you to, to understand and learn something like this? Uh, retaining data, especially for big enterprise systems, is super important, especially if it's financial data, right? Uh, you want to keep track of all the changes that happened, especially when these changes are for investigation, for, you know, legal purposes. Some countries around the world say you have to retain the data for at least two years. You know, there's so many different things out there. When you're building something serious, something like this comes in as a blessing and a miracle because it kind of helps you kind of do, do your, uh, your, uh, your job a lot easier. My personal opinion, you know, whatever you're building out there, even if it's just a simple mom and pop shop, there will always be this little conflict and this confusion about, you know, what happened to this record. Someone deleted a record by mistake or someone changed a record and saved it by mistake and they can't remember exactly what it was, right? This is, consider this as your undo button, right? This is your undo button that keeps the safeguard that allows you to kind of roll back you know, to the most recent or the last change before then. And on the topic of rollback, you know, and you will see this hopefully next year, we're going to start talking a little bit about this as I'm kind of introducing you to a whole bunch of tools like aspect oriented programming and, you know, conditionals and all that. This is all kind of a prerequisite. I'm kind of preparing, you know, my subscribers and my audience to kind of uh, be familiar with some of these concepts because I'm going to start using those to standardize uh, the systems that we're building. Um, it's really important to, for you to know that any system out there needs to offer the capability of rollbacks, right? You can use something like this to be able to go and say roll back to a particular point in time. Entity Framework gives you that outside of the box within a particular context, but once the transaction is over, there is no opportunity there to, to roll back. And that's a little, you know, problem when it comes to these systems, right? I want to give my consumer some kind of ID or some token of some kind that allows them to kind of go back and roll a particular record. What does that look like? You know, how do we implement something like this? Uh, what does it mean for RESTful API operations? There's so much stuff that I can't wait to share with you. Um, uh, and, you know, hopefully you're going to find something like this useful. Uh, before I forget, though, uh, my dear friend uh, Jeremy Lickness, you know, wrote a, a an amazing uh, piece on uh, temporal tables. Uh, he talks a lot about, you know, how you can leverage this capability. He gives you all kinds of options. 
you know he's in he's a he's a principal uh, program manager he's in the heart of entity framework work so you know and and, he, and he's also an advocate he loves to share uh, data and information in addition to being just a nice guy you know in general so take a look at his i'm going to drop the link to his uh, blog post in in the comment section uh, sorry in the description you know take a look and see what he has to offer here and hopefully you're going to find uh, a lot of useful information there if if you find this video useful please uh, make sure uh, you share it you know and as usual if you have any questions comments concerns i don't know why my screen is blurred all the, uh, there you go um uh, if you have any comments questions concerns please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section don't forget to like and subscribe see you in another video take care